my um, career was really set off by my father because uh, although he uh, was uh, professionally uh, a repairer of cars uh, since he's, he set himself up in 1912, he also was a builder of wirelesses. And so he built, he built wireless receivers right back in the early 1920s of, of all, all levels of complexity. And um, um, it was through that that I, I started building wirelesses myself. And I, I got an, um, an interview with the Marconi Company in Chelmsford um, through my cousin who, was, um, who lived in Great Baddow uh, uh, make this arranged. And I, I went to see the head of research in the research laboratories in Great Baddow and um, uh, was taken on for a, a hundred pounds a year. And Mr. Kemp, who was the head of research, um, or, or who actually interviewed me, said, and you'll bring your own tools with you, won't you? <laughs> uh, during, during the war, um, a particular uh, department was, was part of the listening service to see what the enemies were doing with themselves and where they were. And so we had we designed various specialist receivers for direction finding to find out where the signals were coming from. I also was in, involved in designing a, a direction finder to listen for V2s should they have any signals on board. Now, of course, we now know that they didn't have any signals on board, so my equipment wasn't actually necessary, but it was a jolly good VHF direction finder. After leaving Mansfield and uh, having my two years st studying for my degree, I wanted to get into the forces and that was not permitted for people with degrees in chemistry or physics unless you were clearly going to qualify for a commission. But that meant first joining the army at York in the Rifle Brigade. Then I went for a six-week study at an officer's basic training unit down in Kent, which eventually gave me a commission as a second lieutenant in the Royal Engineers about uh, September 19. 44. I wanted to join the RAF as an air gunner, which was sheer madness now that we know that 50% of air crew lost their lives. But you know what, boys, that gung ho, shoot them all down sort of stuff, which was utter nonsense. And I went for my, I went, joined the ATC and I learned Morse code, aircraft recognition, went on drills and parades and things. And I thought, well, there's no problem, you see because I knew I was going to get called up at the end of the year, at the end of 1942, which did happen. And, but in September, uh, I went for my medical at High Wycom, and uh, after quite a long examination, uh, the gentleman in charge says, I can't accept you for RAF, for RAF air crew. I thought, why, why ever not? And he fumbled about in the papers, and it was some time before... He reached a conclusion, he said, I can't see anything, re any reason why, except perhaps you're underweight. Now that underweight saved my life. And I'm, I really mean that. He said, well, I'll tell you what, he said, I'll get you in the RAF. What did you do in Chivy Street? Well, I had about a year where I worked as a, as a stock clerk for a timber company. They decided that I'd be best fitted in the RAF for an, as an equipment assistant. I didn't know what that was. It meant store basher, you see. And I thought, that sounds a bit dull. But I had to say yes, I couldn't refuse that. And it was one of the happiest years of my life, 1942. I mean, at that time, I had no idea of the horrors and of Holocaust and, uh, and, the, and the atrocities and defeats and all that were going on in, in Europe and uh, throughout the world, really. But my life was very good. It was my f f first time I had a flight. I was taken up to High Wycombe, uh, just outside there, there's an airfield called Booker. And I went up in a tiger moth, which I thought was wonderful. And a month or two later, I went up again in a Magus, a Miles Magister, which was also very good. And the flight sergeant addressed the parade and he said, uh, how many of you chaps want to volunteer to serve overseas? 
no one said a word. He said, it makes no difference. You're all going anyway. <laughs> so that was that. Well, I came back to South End in mid-1942 and uh, there was no, the school wasn't back, but there, there were, people were coming back in jibs and drabs. But I managed to get myself a job as a booking clerk on the railway. But I carried on my studies at the Municipal College under Billy Wyatt, actually, who was the principal there. He left the school and went, went back to South End and was uh, principal at the Municipal College. Well, I joined the Navy in January 1940, beginning of January 1945, ostensibly to train as a fleet air arm pilot. So I had a medical and I was found that I was a quarter of an inch under height. Instead of being five foot six, I was five foot five and three quarters. And although I passed the medical, I couldn't pass the height. So I then was regraded as a fleet air, as a able seaman and spent uh, three years as able seaman in the Navy. Because by that time the war was over and uh, I didn't see any action, but I went out into the Mediterranean. I was out in the Mediterranean for about 18 months on HMS Triumph. It was very strange when I got back, although, although the, it was not quite a ghost town, it was pretty much a ghost town, and lots of places were not open. Uh, cinemas, not all the cinemas were open, I don't think, and uh, things like that. I enjoyed clubs, right? uh, there was a, a particular club which was a great source of entertainment for a lot of us. Was It was called The Good Companions, and every week we met at St Saviour's Church Hall. I didn't, didn't go to church, but we went to the church hall. Uh, where a, oh, dozens of us assembled, male and female. We danced, we listened to music, jazz music, swing music, and had a jolly good time, made a lot of friends, some of whom stayed friends for years and years and years. One of the chaps, who was an old boy, I think he was another old boy who came from a public school late, so I didn't know him at school, but Des Russell... Um, suddenly announced he was joining the Navy, joining the Fleet Air Arm. I said, oh, that's interesting, yeah. So he, off he went to join the Fleet Air Arm, came back a little bit later. This is great, join the Fleet Air Arm. We do this, we do that, we do the other. Then we're going down to Birmingham to learn how to fly, then we're going to Canada, and so on and so forth. So I joined the Fleet Air Arm. Volunteered. Joined up in the police area. 